So examples, these are all over the car. Switch inputs. Let's talk about them electrically now. Once we get this down electrically, the designs, then we'll be able to accurately and quickly diagnose any switch input problem on a car. And so there's two main designs. It's pull up and pull down. It's something you want to remember. There's two main design switch inputs. We'll just call them pull up and pull down. Now, I don't know if other people in the industry are using those terms. I do, and I'll show you why as we go. Uh, it helps describe the circuit design. Pull up and pull down. Up in here, switch closed. What did the switch close to? It closed to ground. And now this resistor is in play. We now have a drop across this resistor because we now have current flow. <laughs> Computer's going to read zero volts right here. If you had a voltmeter out here, you would also read zero volts. And so we call this design, and it makes sense, a pull-down design switch input. What is the switch doing? It's closing to ground. It's pulling the voltage down. Some terminology that we're going to need here. When we talk about computer systems, we have wires that come into the computer and we have wires that come out of the computer. And we'll call these wires that come in inputs and we'll call these signal wires. Inputs we'll call signal wires. This would be your computer. And then the wires that come out, we'll call these outputs. And we'll call these control wires. Signal wires, we could say uh, the computer is watching. We're watching these circuits. And uh, control wires, obviously in term, is we are controlling. We're going to turn things on, turn things off on the output side. Where I have my, my guys get confused is when we put section two, which is what we're talking about, switch inputs, pull up, pull down design, and then we start combining that information when we jump to section three, which is on the output side where we start turning things on and off, which is power and ground side switching, the terminologies get mixed up very easily. So that's where the confusion really comes in and we'll try to clarify this as much as possible. But inputs we'll call signal wires, Outputs we'll call control wires. Where we're at right now, this is section two. Section two is where we are. When we jump to section three next, this is where we're going to be. We're going to be on the output side. And it gets a little bit more confusing, or, or there's another variable here, is we can actually watch what we're controlling, too. Uh, and we'll get into that, and that gets a little bit crazy, that the computer actually watches its outputs, very similar to how it watches its input. So just remember that with these switches, what we're talking about right now, back to the, the book here, the computer is not controlling anything in this circuit. Can you guys see that? That, that the computer is just simply watching this circuit. It has no decision making as far as opening and closing the switch. The computer is simply watching the voltage in the circuit to know the switch position. Okay, so circuit design, you follow the wire. You want to remember this, without a voltmeter, using a wiring diagram, what do we do? Follow the wire that does not go to the computer. If it goes to a ground, it's a pull down. If it goes to a power, it's a pull up. So that's identification number one. Number two, we can actually identify a switch input using a voltmeter. Okay, we're starting into the testing section now of switch inputs. Okay, starting at the left, signal voltage is fixed low. The first step that you would do on a pull-down design is disconnect the switch. Uh, well, let's go to figure three first. Figure three is going to be on page 11. This is key. In, in my flowchart, where, where are we testing this? Measured at the switch. So zero volt could be short to ground, zero volt could be an open, zero volt could be the computer's not sending out its signal voltage. And then also, one last thing, is couldn't it also be the switch is stuck in the closed position? 
keeping the voltage down all the time, even though you're moving the switch, say mechanically, that it is stuck internally in the closed position, it's possible. So what I've done is, is I've tried to think about what I would do in the field and, and list it for you in, in a speed type format as best I could. And I, I'm telling you what I would do next on this is I would eliminate the switch as a cause because it's the easiest one to check. And it is very simple that all we would do is we would disconnect the switch while we're monitoring the signal voltage. 